I, I do want to say this because I, I feel like we're this is a, a thing, a, a trend that we've kind of been. It's not. I, I don't think everyone does it, but I think it's it's I've seen it enough where it's like. We got to talk about it. We, we can't keep comparing Cade to, to Trevor and, and Deshaun Watson, not not from a, uh, a or, and not even saying like um, from a, a talent standpoint, but just from a, a situation standpoint, like we, yeah. we can't. The reality is, is Deshaun Watson's and Trevor Lawrence's are not the norm, even from even from five star quarterbacks. Like for as far as five star quarterbacks are concerned, I don't even right. think Deshaun. I don't even think Deshaun was. He was a five star on some sites. I, I don't even know if he was a consensus five star. But I don't think so. Yeah. Um, but still, top one. You know, top fifty type, top one hundred type player. Um, like I, I don't think we can like some some freshman quarterbacks come in and you know they just light the world on fire and they're ready to go. But even the five stars, you know, that is not the norm. Like I think we 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 hear more about the ones that are successful. Um, but the reality is is especially when you look at the the, the other guys and and Cade's a uh, quarterback class, he's actually ahead <laughs> of a lot of them. Um, yeah. Now you could attribute that to to COVID evaluations and stuff. And I think that's a conversation to be had, but the reality is, is that Cade is not like, I don't think Cade is behind necessarily behind schedule. He was behind, he was behind where we we had hoped he would be last year. That's, that's the reality, but I don't necessarily think that, you know, he's behind to from a point of like, he's not going to be what, you know, Clemson needs him to be. Yeah. And so we can't, we can't compare him to, to Deshaun Watson or Trevor Lawrence. I mean, one, you know, different offense, you know, different personnel, certainly uh, from a skill position standpoint, um, even offensive line. Like you were obviously you didn't have the greatest offensive lines in the world while those two were there, but they, they were a lot more functional than the ones we've seen in recent years. Um, and so I, I think when you include that, and then of course you, you had the, the crazy defenses, I mean, your defense has still been pretty good, but you know, we don't have, we haven't been 2018 Clemson's defense in the last three years. Um, so, like, I, I don't think we can, we can make that comparison. I think we, I think Deshaun Watson and Trevor Lawrence have ruined our perception of what, you know, what most five star quarterbacks look like. They still have an adjustment period. Most of them do. And again, when you look at the the, the guys in this, class, you know, let me just let me pull up um, that 2022. Uh, quarterback class because I, I just want to read some of the names um and Quinn Ewers was in that class too uh, but he was. He, 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 yeah he reclassified if he if you remember let's see I'm pulling up to 24 7 because I I just want to I want to go through this so just so we can see where we're at uh so here are the guys you got Drew Aller who just started his first year at Penn State last year yeah he he was mar- like statistically, he was marginally, he was slightly better than Cade. Wasn't great, and especially in the big games, they, they Penn State struggled. Um, then you have Cade, you have Connor Wegman, guy hasn't been able to stay healthy. I mean, nope. He's expected to have a big year this year, but we haven't seen much of much from him. I can't can't say he's ahead of Cade. Ty Simpson doesn't play; he's not ahead of him. Uh, Devin Brown at Ohio State. He's not even the, they brought in a transfer. They didn't believe he he could be the he was the starter. Uh, Will Howard has his job. Um, Walker Howard at LSU, not a starter. Garrett Nussmeyer is the is the guy. Gunnar Stockton. We, oh, um, Nick Evers at uh, Oklahoma hasn't seen the field. Um, Malik Murphy didn't win the job at Texas, and he was and he was behind. You know, Arch Manning, uh, he was behind Arch Manning uh, when he transferred to uh, Duke. So he'll be a starter for the first full time starter for the first time this year. Uh, Brady Allen at Purdue. Nope. Caden Hauser. Nope. Taven Jackson. Nope. Like I, I'm going through this list. Like if you look at the, the, li- the list of guys, it Cade is ahead of pretty much all of these guys. Yeah. I mean, you got. Jakari Brown, he's played some, hasn't looked good for Miami, and he, he uh, I think he's transferred. Um, Sam Horn doesn't play at, at Missouri. A.J. Duffy, he transferred from Florida State. Zach Pyron, he played some for Georgia Tech. He had some moments. 
but he hasn't had a full year starting either. And, you know, Haynes King is the guy now. So I, I so it, it, Nate Johnson is getting ready to start his first year at Utah. So like there, or actually no, because you, you still have Cam Rising, <laughs> but he's, he's behind Cam Rising. So like I, I, the reality is, is that when you compare Cade to his peers, he, he's actually ahead of pretty much all of them other than maybe Drew Aller. And he was the number one, they were the number one and number two quarterback in the class, depending on where you look. So I, I, I think we need to kind of calm down with the comparisons of, of Cade and, and what, what Trevor and Deshaun did in their first year starting and, and what they were as freshmen. Like it's not a comparable situation. And, you know, the, the reality is, is Cade was a guy that needed more time. And we were going to have to, again, he's, he needs to get to that point. So it, it doesn't mean like everything's, you know, everything's cool. Like you, you still need to see that progression, but you know, because like because he wasn't what he was, what you know, Kate, Deshaun and Trevor were in their first years, does not mean that you know Cade wasn't worthy of his ranking or he's overrated. And I mean that's what Brian hit on. And Brian is has been as critical of the offense as anybody, but he even he like, he understands that Cade is was is a work in progress, and yeah. he's not the five star quarterbacks that you know you know or really the the two five star quarterbacks that Clemson was used to. Yeah, he wasn't, you know, Kate didn't turn out to be a plug and play five star quarterback like Deshaun Watson and, and Trevor Lawrence. And we learned that with DJ too. DJ uh, wasn't that. And DJ wasn't either. And DJ was yeah. a very, you know, high, highly rated five star quarterback as well. And yeah. they just didn't work out. Um, you're, you're never going to just rattle off Trevor Lawrence and Deshaun Watson over and over again. That's just not the reality. Um, you know, unfortunately, the quarterback position is a very tough position um, to play, especially at the highest level of college football. And, you know, we're, we we got spoiled. And, you know, it's it's hard to to kind of, you know, go from Watson and Trevor Lawrence. And then, you know, you're still recruiting five star quarterbacks and DJ and, and Cade and they don't look like that. It's hard as fans. Right. But you got to understand that. Most five-star quarterbacks are never going to be like Deshaun Watson and Trevor Lawrence. It's usually never plug and play like that. You know, there's a few guys, but those guys are so few and far between. Um, and I think sometimes, and, and even us, like, you know, even me, like, you know, sometimes we lose sight of that. Um, so um, I think, you know, we, we, we okayed um, the, you know, this season and see, see what he does. Right. He's, I think he's got, he's got some tools to work with now. Right. Uh, and it's year two in a system and you hope that he takes the next step forward as a year two starting quarterback, just like you would expect. Right. Um, but if you're expecting Trevor Lawrence or, or Deshaun Watson level play, it's not happening. It's, it, it, it ain't there. Yeah. That's not it's never coming. I don't, yeah. I don't care if he plays for Clemson for four more years. That level of play is not coming out of yeah. Kate Klubnik. And that's no that, slight that, that can't be the expectation either. Right? Yeah, and that's no slight to Kate at all. Um, he doesn't need to be that, I don't think, for this offense to be successful. Um, so we just got to hope that the reports that we've heard come out of fall camp show themselves on the field this season. That, yeah. That's all we can hope for as fans um, because Cade – Believe it or not, um, regardless of the spring game or, or anything else, he's the best option on that team at quarterback. So, and it has been clear. Like I, I, I think, and it's it's become especially become clear. I, I think in fall, like I, I yeah, I, people were talking about Trent Pyramid. Like I don't, I don't know if you guys like heard about the, the, the practice reports and the scrimmage notes, you know, coming out. But you know, Trent Pyramid did not have a good day. No. Uh, in that, I mean, especially in that first scrimmage, he did like, I, I again, like, and we, and that's something we talked about ever since the spring game is the reality is, is as good as he looked, like yeah. we can say, okay, well maybe we, we need to give him a closer look, but he is not, we don't, we're not there. We haven't seen every single practice. We haven't seen every rep he takes. And there is a reason why he's not, you know, just the, the bona fide starter. He isn't, he's very limited athletically. He does not. He has the by far the the least amount of arm talent between the three guys in the room. Like I, I think he's a, he's a very smart player, but 
you know, ultimately your goal and what you brought Garrett Riley in was to develop your five star and, and four star quarterback to eventually be, you know, you know, high level starters for you. And so, like, I, I think we need to I think we needed to calm down on the uh, uh, we had to calm down on, on the Trent Pierman stuff. Like, I think. You know, we he was he, we, he was it was an eye opening performance. Okay, he's better than we thought. Like, oh, we just thought, oh man, he's he's Danny Pierman's kid, and you know, he was just a former walk on. You know, they like him. He was a good high school player, but never really. You know, but we we at least think that you know you he has some he has some ability, but it it it, it should have never extended to the point where he's our best option because we I, I I that's and that's not what you, again that's not what you brought Garrett Riley. You didn't bring Garrett Riley to develop Trent Pierman. You brought him in to develop K. Klubnik and um, and Christopher Brzezina as well. I'm sorry, I was muted. Young Pablo gets in here and says, exactly. See, how do you guys know Cade has improved? To your we, point, Young Pablo, we don't. We don't. We have no idea if Cade has improved it or not. All we know are reports from the limited practice that the media members get to see and what they have said, and then what the coaches and the players tell us through interviews. That's all we know for sure, which is why me and Jordan have always taken the approach this entire offseason saying that we are cop cautiously optimistic that the offense will improve this season. And we've laid out the reasons that we think it could improve. Now, it could come week one, week two, week three. We could be, you know, three, four weeks into the season, and Kate Klubnik looks like, the same OK club Nick that he's always been, right? That is a that is a possibility, right? There's also a possibility that he takes a step forward in year two of Garrett Riley's system and starts looking a bit more polished as a quarterback, right? We don't know for sure. All we know is there are some encouraging reports coming out of fall camp, and the one thing we do know is Kate's the best option at quarterback. So we as fans. Better hope he takes the next step forward and improves because he's the best option. So if he doesn't take the next step, it's not looking good. Um, so I don't think we're we're saying that definitively Cade has improved. We're hearing some encouraging things and hoping that it proves itself on the field this season. Right. And, and that's the reality. Like, I, I think two things can we, we, I feel pretty confident that Cade is, is the best option and the, you know, who Clemson needs uh, to be successful. And also say that I don't know if he's better. Like, I don't know for sure that he's, he's yeah, made sure that, that jump from last year. Right. So, you know, that I, I think both of those things can be true. Yeah. 100%. Uh, I think, I think those are, are all good points.